Hello and welcome back to this damn Palladialistic Crusade. This will be a short video updating uh, my Hardy Boys collection. These are some of the editions I've picked up recently in various local used bookshops and my usual hunting for more editions and uh, some of the different cover arts. But also two recent uh, reprints, or actually I should say brand new reprints, that I picked up from Amazon of a very important material by Leslie McFarlane, the real series creator and author of the majority of the original text editions. So to quickly go over the uh, series editions I picked up, once again uh, mention the Dover Publishing reprint of the original text of The Tower Treasure, the original McFarland 1927 text uh, that is a fantastic reading experience, amazing to see it in print again. Uh, generic cover and doesn't have the original artwork uh, or interior illustration, but it is the original text. It is in print. You can buy it in bookstores. I saw it in uh, Barnes and Noble on the shelf and you know, it's under 10 bucks. Uh, you can get it for about $7 online and it's finally getting the original text in print again. Then I picked up another of the Black Spine uh, Penguin versions of the revised text. This is the 2017 printing of book six, The Shore Road Mystery. Uh, this one, the artwork does look very striking, and you know it, it looks nice. It's just the again, as with this series, the color choices make it feel a bit. I hate to say cartoony, but that's sort of the or or sort of like a comic book. So uh, again, the image looks nice. Um, I see this and I don't exactly think of the short road mystery, but it is a striking looking cover. And again, these have these matching black spines, but again, the choice of that sort of pinkish purple makes it feel more like a, a comic book or, or it gives it a slight cartoony flavor. Other than that, these are still the revised text in terms of the book plate. So it'd be just like the flashlight editions from the 90s, except for the fact that the title page has been updated and so has the copyright, but otherwise it is exactly the same. So uh, they did uh, up to at least Cabin Island in this design. So th I think the first eight have this. And every time I find a, a cheap one, I go ahead and get it for my completion sake <laughs> nature of collecting the series. But uh, this is just one of the ones I didn't have. Then I found a couple nice digest copies, which is uh, getting harder to do in the wild when you're looking at a bookstore. Usually when you find them now, they're pretty trashed or uh, the condition is not great or they have a lot of tanning or... Uh, it's a later version of one of the first digests without the illustrations or the, the prices are higher because they are getting older. So I couldn't say no to a very cheap but rather nice copy of The Crimson Flame, book 77, one of my favorite digests that I read a lot growing up. This is the original Wanderer edition. Uh, it does have the original illustrations. I think this may be a, a second printing, judging by the copyright page. But it's one of the digests where it's on the sort of whiter, uh, much brighter paper stock, which also is less prone to tanning. So this is actually in better condition than my other copy, and it's still got the interior illustrations. So uh, this is one of those cases where... You don't necessarily have to get a first printing digest because the second or third printings will sometimes be on uh, better paper like this that ages better and still has the illustrations. So as you can see, the paper has no tanning at all. Uh, this one is from the second sort of what's termed the checkerboard type design. So this is the second cover art. This is for book 79, Sky Sabotage. Uh, it has a little bit of wear. It has some unfortunate cover creasing, but otherwise is in perfect shape. The spine's in good shape too. And this one was also uh, with Crimson Flame uh, at a very cheap price. It was actually less than a dollar. And like that book, even though this is about, uh, I believe, a fourth printing, it has the sort of whiter, clearer paper stock without any tanning. And it's early enough that it still retains the original illustrations. So this is one of the books you can get uh, with the uh, revised cover art, not in the original uh, Wanderer design, but it still held on to the illustrations for a while. Now here is a later checkerboard printing of book number 80 
the Roaring River Mystery. This I have in the original Wanderer edition, but this is a later 1991 printing under the Minstrel imprint, so it has the then current design of the checkerboard type editions, and again, this is because, called that because of the sort of little checkerboard pattern you get here on the logo. So this I simply got because it was cheap, and it's the different cover art, but since this is already under Minstrel, it does not reproduce the original illustrations. This printing, again, is from 1991, so long after the original uh, 1984 printing of the Wanderer edition. But otherwise, the text is the same. But as you can see, uh, this is on the uh, paper stock that already is, is prone to tanning. So it's got a little bit of tanning, but still in pretty good shape. But this this is much more the, the typical condition you get of a digest, even from this time period. It's just uh, sometimes you come across uh, versions like the other two I just went over where it's on that much uh, brighter and whiter paper stock that doesn't tan like most of them do. So this was just another cheap other edition I've been looking to cross off my wish list. And now, lastly, I want to talk about the two Leslie McFarlane texts that are not specifically Hardy Boys stories, but uh, that are brand new reprints that uh, I just, I can't wait to dive into. So this first one, this is the big one. This is the brand new 2022 hardcover reprint of McFarlane's long, long out of print memoir, Ghost of the Hardy Boys. Uh, it was originally published in the mid-70s. It goes for absurd money online, and I've read tantalizing <laughs> excerpts from it, but it's only now in 2022 that it has finally been reprinted. Uh, this is a beautiful hardcover edition that is done to exactly mimic the classic original picture cover printings, and it's even got a version of the classic uh, spine logo, which is a beautiful touch that you don't see online, obviously. Uh, this is available on Amazon. It is, I think, exclusively on Amazon. Uh, and it is, um, for, for this uh, quality of hardcover and trying to recreate the picture covers, which it does a really great job of, it's got a really nice quality feel to it, uh, it's uh, a little over $20. It's not a bad price for the, the quality of printing. Anytime you get a book online that's either print on demand or you know it, it's done through Amazon, you don't know what the quality is exactly going to be like. But you open this, it's got nice sort of maroon in papers and uh, the actual page quality is nice and so is the print quality. So this has an introduction from McFarlane and it is a complete reprint of his original memoir text. And it, it was, I never even thought I would be able to get a copy because the, the original, anytime it pops up on eBay, it's easily well over a hundred to $200 or sometimes even more simply due to the, the rarity and the value and that there are a lot of other collectors who want to get a copy as well. So this is an absolute treasure. And it's amazing it has finally been reprinted. Uh, it is, again, a little over $20, which is a steal compared to what it, it uh, the original versions go for still. And and actually, the, the beauty of uh, this uh, design to mimic the picture covers is really well done. So my hat's off to the people involved in getting this in print and making this beautiful nod to the original design of the books. Obviously, not trying to get stuck with copyright infringement either but you can clearly tell figures resembling the boys peering in at who is uh, presumably McFarlane himself pounding out one of the stories on a typewriter so uh, absolutely beautiful essential book for all fans and it's just amazing this has come back into print I will be doing rev a review of this as soon as I have time to read it but uh, again I'm just amazed this is in print again and then, interestingly, I wasn't aware of this, but uh, apparently another publisher has uh, put out a, a sort of lost or forgotten McFarlane tale. So this is not a Hardy Boys story, but uh, the, the price was so inexpensive that I, I couldn't resist picking up this reprinting of Leslie McFarlane's The Streets of Shadow, which apparently is a work from 1929 that was originally uh, published or serialized in uh, one of the magazines, or I guess a pulp magazine, actually. Uh, this is from Fiction House Press. It's a really nice, uh, rather large trade paperback uh, in terms of the size dimension. It clocks in at about uh, 300 pages, and uh, it, as far as I know, this is a pretty obscure book because I had never actually heard of it, but it does actually rather surprisingly reproduce 
some of the original illustrations, I guess, from the original ma magazine publication. So uh, I'm very much looking forward to reading this because I've always wondered what uh, McFarlane's other writings were like. And again, this is absurdly cheap. It's actually less than $7 on Amazon. I picked it up for, I think it was $6.97. And I didn't know what to expect. Again, uh, sort of print on demand or independent publisher being sold through Amazon. So I expected it to be just a small little paperback. But again, this is a hefty book. It's, you know, again, full trade paperback dimensions. It's actually bigger than the Ghost of the Hardy Boys reprint. So as you can see, it's actually bigger. So yeah, I'm very much looking forward to reading this because I've really fallen in love with uh, McFarlane's writing style and doing the this deep dive into the original Hardy Boys text. So uh, I, I couldn't resist getting both since I was already having to get this through Amazon. Uh, it's the one time one of their suggested picks actually made sense because I'm like, wait, there's a McFarlane book in print? I've, I've got to read that too. And again, it's it's absurdly cheap at under $7 for a brand new book. So here's a shot of the spines, and again, uh, just some really interesting, wonderful text, but the main draw outside of the uh, Tower Treasure original text getting reprinted is the fact that there are now at least two examples of McFarland's other writing in print, uh, this wonderful-looking Streets of Shadow, and the amazing lovely can't believe it exists reprint of his long out of print memoir ghost of the hardy boys so uh this belongs on every fan's shelf and uh, i i'd definitely say get it before it's gone i don't know how long it's going to stay in print but the quality is beautiful and the price is extremely low compared to what the uh, original printings of his memoir goes for so that's it for this particular update it's you know, a, a little short update for uh, what I picked up for my collection, but uh, I, again, I'm just, I'm stunned Ghost of the Hardy Boys is available in a new edition, and it's this well done, and for only, you know, about $22. That's, that's, that seems crazy, but uh, it's definitely a must, and it is uh, available, I think, only through Amazon. So uh, I hope this has been fun and somewhat informative, as, as always. I know the Hardys are uh, very much a niche today in 2022, but it's still uh, a, a fun series to always revisit and think of and continue collecting. The collecting seemingly never ends. And uh, it's amazing that uh, we're getting some, some new uh, printed material in regards to getting the original texts out there again and getting some of the original creative mind behind the series, uh, getting his other texts into print, and especially his memoir that I've been dying to read for years. So I want to say, as always, keep reading, keep reading print books, keep supporting your local independent bookstores wherever possible, and always remember, this emblem leads to adventure. Thanks ever so much for watching.